So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Well, as I said, this is Communicate with Calendar and Gmail, and it is a fairly basic introduction to some of the things that you can do with your calendar and your Gmail account. So today we're going to create and share a new calendar. We're going to add an event to the calendar. We're going to receive and accept invitations in Gmail. We're also going to create an email signature and then we're going to talk about some resources that are available out there uh, if you want to learn more about uh, Google products. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so we're going to start with creating and sharing a new calendar and I'm going to stop sharing this screen so that I can then go ahead and share a new screen. New share, that's where I want. So be just a second while I get the new screens going here. Got a bunch of windows loaded in incognito browsers because I have more than one Google account. So I kind of need that so that I can, it doesn't interfere with what we're doing. So let's share our desktop now. Let's get that Q&A out of the way for now. And you should all be seeing uh, a brand new Google account. It has in here the inbox, it has Gmail, it has everything that you need to start for a brand new email account. I've actually got two of them loaded right now. I've got a test count loaded in Safari and I've got a test count loaded in Chrome. They look the same, but they're two separate accounts. Of course, I'm using a Mac, but all of the things that I'm doing are also available on a PC today. All right, so let's talk about creating and sharing a new calendar. The first thing we have to do is we have to find the calendar when we log in. So if you're not familiar with the uh, way Google's products work, uh, it hides things under this little icon right here. So when I click on this icon, I have all kinds of different things here. And you may see different things based on your particular Gmail account. The Gmail account that I'm using is part of Google Apps, so it's part of Google for Business, but Gmail, uh, personal Gmail accounts should be very similar as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Calendar. Take a second to load here, and this is our Google Calendar, and it says, hey, you're new to Google Calendar. Um, did you know we have apps available? So yeah, we've, we've got it, Google. We don't, don't need the apps right now. Um, so this is pretty standard. Um, over here to the side, these are the calendars that I am subscribed to. So this count is Brie to do space test one. Uh, and then I've got birthdays. So if I have birthdays in my contacts list, that would show up there. I have reminders. So if I'm using uh, Google apps for reminders, that would be there. Same for task list. Then the other calendar that I have shared with me is just holidays in the United States. So if I switch to a monthly view by coming up here to the top, clicking on from week to month, I can see the various holidays here in the States. So I have to remember that Sunday morning is daylight savings time and not to come to work late on Sunday. Of course, St. Patty's Day, all that sort of things. All right, so let's talk about um, creating a brand new calendar. So I have my personal calendar here. I want an additional calendar. And ultimately my goal is, is I'm gonna share that calendar with my other account. Um, and a good real world application is, is that I'm not going to show it because it contains personal information, but I have a calendar that I share with both of my roommates and it's our house calendar. So that way we know if there's something important coming up or if one of us has to be away for work or um, you know, we need to remind ourselves to feed the dogs their heartworm medication 
or uh, if you are have kiddos that you're managing, maybe you have a calendar of their events. So maybe you have a calendar that's, you know, the days they're going to be out of school and practice and when games are. And these are great things to share with all of the adults in your household and maybe even grandparents uh, so that grandparents know when the game schedule is. You get the I know you get the game schedule at the very first of the um, season and you put it into the calendar, you know, create a new calendar, share that with your with with grandparents and aunties and uncles, and then everybody can come to the game. So that's that's kind of what we're going to do is we are going to create a brand new calendar here. Get my notes in order. So we're gonna click on other calendars right here, this plus sign. And when we mouse over it, we can see that immediately it says add other calendars. Typically, uh, if there's something that needs to be done and we're not sure what it is, if we mouse over it, it will tell us what we're looking at. So if I mouse over the three dots here, this is the options for the birthday calendar. I mouse over the three dots, the options for the holidays in the United States calendar. Um, I mouse over this and it's add another calendar. So if you're not sure what a button does in Google, if you hold your mouse over it, you probably can figure out what it does because it should tell you what it, do what it does. All right, so we are going to click on the plus here under other calendars and we're going to create a new calendar. So we are going to name this uh, calendar Kiddos soccer schedule because it's March, so it's about soccer time, isn't it? Soccer. All right. And once we've done that, we're just going to go ahead. If this was in another time zone, so if this was in, we're we're in the central time zone right now. Um, but say you were sharing this with a workmate who was in uh, Eastern. Uh, the Eastern time zone. I have a good friend who I frequently work on projects with. I could switch this to the Eastern time zone if I wanted, but since this is, this is a local on the ground sort of thing, we're gonna keep this in central time and I'm gonna hit create a calendar. Just taking a moment. And it says down here at the bottom, kiddos soccer schedule successfully created. And then it had a configure button. Well, that configure went away but that's fine because I can still get in and configure it. I'm gonna click up here in the upper left corner to go back to my calendar. And now under my list of calendars, I see kiddo soccer schedule. So let's go ahead and add a new event. So I'm just gonna click, let's say our first game is on the 20th. I'm gonna double click on here. And immediately I'm going to come to this screen. So um, first game, I'm probably not all day. So I'm gonna unclick the all day. And uh, you know, when I was having soccer, it was always brutally early in the morning. Um, so I'm gonna say that it's 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And there's a couple of things that we can do here. So if I know that the games are always 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I can actually set those to repeat. So right now it says does not repeat, but I can set these to repeat weekly on Saturday. Um, if this is an event that maybe it's uh, a meetup, you could set it to do um, the third Saturday of every month. You could set it yearly, so annually on March 20th. Uh, that would be great for birthdays. Um, every weekday, or you could do a custom and then pick this repeats every X number of weeks on this day and ends after this day. But we're going to do these one by one. So we're just going to do does not repeat. Um, soccer games are probably not virtual, so we're not going to go ahead and add a Google meeting, but we're going to say um, I don't actually, I live in Bellevue. I don't know what the soccer fields are in Bellevue. So we're just gonna say Baldwin Fields 
anybody who's tuning in from Bellevue will know that the Baldwin fields are not soccer fields. But you can see the power of the Google Maps is behind this because I start typing in Baldwin Fields and it gives me Ludwig Drive, Bellevue, Nebraska. I happen to know that that's correct. So I'm gonna click that. Um, I can set a notification. So we probably need to leave more than 10 minutes before we have to get there. So I'm gonna set this for an hour, one hour. I could actually add multiple notifications so if you're the kind of person that needs a reminder uh, for something on Saturday, on Tuesday, and then maybe again on Thursday, and then maybe again Saturday morning, you could have as many notifications as you needed to remember the thing. I'm not gonna add more than one notification. I'm going to then go ahead and pick my calendar. So this Brie Do Space one, that's my personal calendar for this account because it's the name of the account. Um, but then I also have a calendar that I can put in here, kiddo soccer schedule. So I'm going to go ahead, click that. And I'm not going to worry too much about the busy default visibility, but if you're setting a meeting at work for by chance, you want to go ahead and leave that as busy because you don't want someone to try and schedule another meeting while you're busy. So right now I'm just gonna do, this is fine. I don't need it to be busy. I could add a description. Um, playing the Wildcats. Green, orange slices. Do they still bring orange slices to soccer games? I don't know but we're, we're in charge of bringing the orange slices uh, for this game. So that's a reminder for me to run and grab oranges just before we go. Um, and then here's where I can invite others. So I am going to invite my other test account. So that is, um, hopefully it's auto-populating, um, but we got Brie do space two. Uh, right now it's auto populating everybody who lives in this Google app domain. Um, it will not auto populate if you've got a brand new account, but if you don't have a brand new account and uh, you know you email grandma and grandpa a lot, you could start typing in their name and it would probably auto populate it. So that is my test person. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And it's going to ask me, would you like to send an invitation to your Google Calendar guests? I'm going to go ahead and hit send. Pat, I do see your question. I will get back with you in one second um, on what the first screen you mean is. Let's go back. All right. So now I have on my calendar 9 a.m. first game. Okay, Pat, which screen did you mean by first screen? Um, is it this Gmail? Is it the main Gmail screen? Let me type in. Is it this one? You're still there? No. Is it the first calendar screen? First calendar screen. Okay. So in my Gmail account, if I click on these uh, dots right here, and then I go to calendar, that will pull me up to the first, the main calendar. I can also type, if you're a fan of remembering URLs, if you type calendar.google.com, that will also take you to the calendar. Is that what you mean? Is that the one you're looking for? The first one that says the first game. Okay, so what I did there is if you double click in any one of these squares, 
that will get you to the meeting invite. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. I always just double click. So let's add, um, uh, the dog has a vet appointment. So we're gonna add, double click that. So I literally just double clicked in the square. The other way that you can do it, we're gonna dismiss that. The other way you can do it is you can click create and then you can do it this way as well. So there's two ways that you can do it. I just, I always click in the square because then I know it's going on exactly the date I want it to go on. Okay, all right. So I sent and got it. Sometimes with new accounts, it's like send, it, it lets me know a bunch of things. So I sent an invite to my second account. So I'm gonna to switch to that right quick. And y'all give me a shout out if you cannot see uh, the new account, the new Gmail on the Safari screen, but you should be seeing, oops, I clicked out of it. You should now be seeing um, the new account and it says Bree do space test one invitation to first game. So, Um, if you, you just go to Gmail um, and create a new account, I pre-created these so I could do the demo. Um, so you would just, just like you created your old Gmail account, if you go to uh, Gmail, well, let me open a new private window. So it doesn't hold on to it. But if we go to gmail.com and click down here to create an account, then you can create multiple accounts. Um, I don't believe that there is any rules about creating multiple accounts on Google. Um, you should certainly read the terms of service, but as far as I know, you are allowed to create how many ever Google accounts that you'd like to create. Um, mine, the, the accounts I created are part of a Google Apps for Business, so um, I created them in a slightly different way, um, but I mostly just created them so I could do the demo. Oh, create another calendar. Okay. So I'll go back to that. Go back to that before we move on. All right. In my Chrome, down here under uh, other calendars. So I'm logged into my Google Calendar, calendar.google.com. Down here in the very bottom in the left hand side, um, right here at this plus, I'm going to zoom in my window just a tiny bit. So y'all can see that, but right here under other calendars, when I click plus, that will allow us to, it allows me to subscribe to a calendar if I want, um, which I'm not gonna be covering today. Um, I can create a calendar. I can also browse calendars of interest. So if an organization has put out a calendar, you might be able to subscribe to it. Um, but I'm gonna just, I click create a new calendar and that will create the new calendar. Zoom back out. All right. Any other questions before I move on? Not seeing any coming through. So let's go over here to our second Google account. And so I've got the invitation that I sent um, when I click in it. Um, this is gonna be pretty standard. If you have a, an Outlook or an Exchange account at work, it's not too dissimilar, but it's got our title, it's got the date, it's got where, it's got who, it's got the agenda, all of this information. I'm gonna click, yes, I'm definitely going to this game unless it snows or it's two degrees outside. Um, so that's all I have to do on my end. I've confirmed it. I don't need to reply. I just need to click yes. And then practice good email hygiene. I'm either going to archive this if I think I need to keep it, which I frequently archive work things so that I can pull them up later. But with this, I'm just going to throw it in the trash because I don't need it. So I have now um, agreed to go to the first soccer game. And when I switch back to the other account in Chrome and I go to our 
first soccer game here. I can see that my other account is now confirmed. There's a green check mark on it. Yes, other account me is definitely going to the soccer game, maybe if we wake up that early. So that's how you would send an invite and then have it confirmed. All right. Now, let's talk about how you actually share this account with someone else. So we sent, we sent grandma an, e uh, an invite for first game, but partner is not seeing the calendar because it's still only our calendar. We need to share this calendar with the other people in our household so that everybody knows that first game is at 9 a.m. on the 20th. So what we're gonna do is under, uh, over here in our list uh, with kiddo, I'm gonna zoom in over here, the list of calendars, kiddo soccer. We're going to click on these three dots and that's gonna get us into the options for this calendar. And then we're going to click on, uh, you know, first we're gonna change the color uh, cause gray is kind of boring. Let's make it, we're going to be avocados because uh, obviously the name of our soccer team is the avocados. So we got to make it green. Um, so you notice when I changed that little green dot here has changed to a light green. Um, now that I've changed the color, let's do settings and sharing. So there's a bunch of things here and I'm not going to go over every single one of these. Um, but we are going to make this available. We're going to make share this with specific people. So here's where I can go and add the description. Um, games for the other. I don't think I spelled that right. I didn't. Uh, the lovely thing about Google is it always provides spell check. Um, and then I don't want to, well, I mean, I could make it public. So if you were the coach uh, of the avocados and you wanted to share it out with all your parents, you could certainly make it public or I could share it with, bleh, I have a hard time saying that word, specific people I could share it with. Um, and we could all manage the calendar together. So right now, the only person that this is shared with is me, but I'm gonna add other people. So I'm gonna add my test account. So I'm adding the email there. Um, you know what, I'm gonna add uh, my do space email. So be Allsbury at do space.org. And I can add this because it's a Google account. If the email I'm sharing with is not a Google account, you're gonna have a harder time uh, adding it. So you do kind of need to have a Google account to share it. Um, and then I can set permissions. Well, let's hit enter. Now I can set permissions. So right now my permissions is see all events. So that means that when I log into this calendar from another account, the only thing I can do is see my events. Uh, I can't add anything, I can't do anything else. Um, the other thing I can do is see only free busy. So if you were sharing your calendar at work with your coworkers and you didn't want them to know what the meeting was, you just wanted them to know if you were busy so that, um, they could send another meeting invite. Cause you know, if you're at work and you've worked places like I work, we are always having meetings. Um, so you could set it to free or busy. Um, you could do, say, make changes to events. So uh, if you were, again, managing the calendar for the avocados and you had a co-coach, uh, you could share it with the co-coach and they could change things. Or you could manage and uh, you could make changes and manage sharing. And you could do that. That's the way I would do it uh, if I was sharing it with the whole household. In fact, that is the way we've done it to share it with the whole household. So I'm gonna go ahead and do make changes and manage sharing. 
and I'm going to hit send. So now I have these are the three people this is shared with, and I can actually set it individually. So maybe the um, the co coach can make changes and manage sharing, but the booster parents can only um, see all the event details. Or maybe this is your household account and you've got uh, tweens and teenagers and you want them to have it. So you have them set so you and your partner can make changes and manage sharing, but your teens and tweens can only see all events. Um, so we're going to make, we're going to set this one to only see all events. That one's going to make changes. And you can know, you see there, it immediately said, hey, we saved it. There's no save button that we have to press uh, to save it. So that is all set. There's other things here I'm not really going to go into. So let's switch to Safari and go to our second account. And you can see here, I've already gotten an email. Uh, Bree Do Space Test One has shared a calendar with you. So I can click on this and it says, we are writing to let you know that uh, this account has given you access to manage events and share settings in a Google calendar called Kiddo Soccer Schedule. After adding this calendar to other calendars, you can hide or completely remove it whenever you want. Then I click, there's a blue underline for this. So I'm gonna click add calendar. This is the first time I've been into calendar. So it's going, hey, remember you can get the app. Yeah, yeah, we know, we're good, thanks. And it says, add this calendar, add. And now this comes up for me under my calendars as the soccer schedule calendar. And when I switch to month view, I now have this listed twice. And the reason why I have this listed twice is because I shared my calendar, but I also got sent an invite to the calendar. So I agreed to come, but I also then shared the calendar. So you wanna do one or the other, either share the calendar with them or send them an invite. Uh, don't do both or it shows up twice. But now I can go ahead and I can say uh, practice. And it, practice is not an all day thing. Shouldn't be an all day thing for kids. Um, shouldn't be an all day thing for grownups either. So we're gonna say practice is at 515 to 545. This does repeat. So we're gonna do weekly on Tuesday. Actually, we're gonna do custom. We're gonna say weekly on Tuesday after, we could do after 13 occurrences or on, and we're gonna say the soccer season ends in May, May 31st. So we're gonna hit done. Then the very last thing we have to remember to do, because it defaults to our personal calendar, we have to come and remember to set it to the kids' soccer, soccer schedule and then hit save. So now we've added, the second account has added something to the um, calendar, which goes till May. So if I switch back to our first account and I look and there it is, there's the event that the second account has added to the calendar. So that's how you can, as a household, add things to a calendar or as a work group or um, you know, between parents and kids, um, that kind of thing. You can go ahead and share a calendar uh, and keep yourself organized that way. Does anybody have any questions on calendars before I move on to email? Give you folks a few minutes to decide if you have any. Okay, We're looking good there. Doesn't look like I've got any questions. Double check and make sure that, oh. Q&A feature. 
Let me open the Q&A feature. Um, oh, yes, I'm sorry. I will go ahead and explain the questions as, as um, I'm answering them. I apologize for that. Okay, so let's move on to our, um, our Gmail. So this is our inbox for, for Google. Um, and if you, this is the first time you've used it, you can go ahead and it actually just comes up and tells you exactly what you can do to customize things. Um, so I can click customize my inbox and this will go through settings. Um, we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna get rid of that so that if you've never used or if you've used your Gmail before, we can kind of go through things. So up here in the corner is a little gear and that has settings and there's quick settings here. So the density is how much stuff is on the screen. Um, so the, there's the default, there's comfortable. That doesn't really change anything. Compact, you can see that there's less space between the lines of text. Um, I personally prefer the comfortable um, just because it's a lot easier to scan. It's a little harder to scan if they are not um, spread out a little bit. Of course, you can do themes. So I can hit view all. Uh, this is mostly about aesthetics. Um, I've always liked the ninja. I usually have the ninja going when I remember to set mine. So there we go. We've got the Google Ninja, which is has been part of the Gmail since they introduced this. In addition to that, we can set how things appear. So if you're a person who gets a lot of email, you can actually kind of uh, set things, prioritize things. So the default is just as they come in. You can also set it to important first. So if I've got an email, Let's mark this one as important. So mark as important. Set back. Marked as important. Right. So if it's marked as important, I can set it to do important first. And so now I've got an important category here. Um, and I know that that one's important. This one's useful if you maybe you have, um, well, none of us are really traveling right now, but when we were traveling frequently, I would um, leave my uh, plane reservations in my inbox and set them to important. So the day that I needed them or the day that I needed to print them out, they were easy to find because uh, they were the very first thing that was on my list. I can set unread first. So I've got one that's read and one that's unread. If I switch to unread first, then that uh, switches the order. So it's unread and everything else. Um, I can do starred. So uh, starred is a little bit older than marking it as important. Um, so something that's starred, you click on the star. So I can do star first. Um, priority inbox, so I can customize. Uh, and this gives me a big thing um, I can set, you know, I want important and unread first, and then I want stars, and then I want um, something else. Um, so you can get really granular on how your email uh, is shown to you. Let's go back. So this is the main settings. Let me get back to our inbox. These are quick settings. We'll see all settings here in just a second. There's also the reading pane. So you can actually have this split uh, and it requires a reload. Oops, press the wrong button. All right, got a raised hand. What is our question on the raised hand? Q and A, where did my Q and A go? Oh, there it is. 
Um, you know, that's really uh, the suggestions for Den Denise asked uh, suggestions for marking emails for the priority level. Um, it's really up to you. Um, I, I get a lot of email. I have several accounts because I work at Do Space and I also teach at UNO. And so I get several accounts and I have a unified inbox. Um, and when I'm um, triaging my email, uh, obviously all of the ads from, you know, Wayfair and Chewy and all of the things that uh, I online shop with, those just, I just immediately throw those away. Uh, done with those, unless I'm, I'm specifically shopping for something. And then those might go low priority. Uh, if I'm, and then I will triage things that I know that need to be taken care of today. Um, and then things that need to be taken care of this week. And then things that um, usually are like, I've left them in my inbox because they're a reminder of something. Uh, so I think that how you organize your inbox is sort of uh, based on how you handle your work, um, especially if you're doing it for a job. Um, it really just depends on, on the, the type of job you're doing and um, how you're doing it for your work. So, um, you know, my priority is, is always the emails my students send me on how do I do a thing. Um, second level priority is the emails my students send me. Will you might write me a recommendation letter that is due in two weeks? Um, so I kind of like, I, I have in the back of my head, like my priorities for how I'm working and what I've got, uh, done and what needs to be done. So that was a really non-committal answer. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I mean, three priorities is probably a good, good one. Uh, Outlook has an inbox folders, which help me does Google. Yes, we will get into that in just a second. So I'm going to clear these out. Do, 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 do. Okay. Done, done, done. So we will get to the, um, the folders in a second. They're not really folders, they're labels, but they work just like folders. Um, so let's go back to our quick settings. Uh, anyways, the reading pane, if I click, let's pull this back up. If I click on this, it actually shows the email in the side here. Um, I don't know of anybody who's a huge fan of reading panes. I think most folks have them turned off. Um, the other thing is that uh, Google does conversational view. So let me, I don't think I have anything that has a conversation. Let's do no split. But let me send a couple emails to this account right quick so that we have uh, a thing to look at. So wrong thing. Safari is what I need. There we go. All right, compose. So if I'm gonna send a new email, first thing I do, click compose. Obviously two, who I'm sending it to, I could CC it. So two is the primary sender. CC is, um, you know, if you are sending a thing saying, hey, did you do a thing? and you want the person's boss to know that they have not in fact done a thing, you could send it to the person and then CC their boss. Um, if you wanna send it to a person and you need someone to know that you've sent it to the person but not know that they sent it to the person and then it would be BCC. So blind copy, blind carbon copy means that um, you, any email address you put in that line, um, the receiver cannot see it. I frequently use blind carbon copy to send out to my students because I don't want them to have any other email addresses or to send out to groups of people um, who are strangers to each other um, because I need to communicate about a class or an idea, but I don't want 
um, to inadvertently share and spam a bunch of email addresses. Can you add a custom inbox category like the star or the important? That I'm not sure on. Let's get some labels in and then we can see. So let's, let me get a couple of emails sent so that we have uh, something to work with. Um, one, send. So I sent an email and then I'm actually going to reply a second. And I'm gonna send the second email. That way you can see what com uh, a uh, conversational threading looks like. So let's go back to our inbox. So look there, I got a new email from my friend test two. I click on it and this is what conversational threading looks like. Instead of getting two separate messages, Google is smart enough to know that um, the second message is a reply to the first one. And so it's grouped them together. If that is not something that you like, if you like individual emails, you can go ahead and turn that off down here under email threading. All right, so let's talk about labels. Um, let's see, let's go into all of our settings. So we're in quick settings right now. I'm gonna do see all settings. And there is a bunch of things in here. So let's get this, start with general. If your first language is not English and you want to change the words, all of the UI and all of these labels so that they are in a different language, you can do that here. Um, enable input tools, I would definitely do this. Um, if you write in a language that does not go left to right, um, like Japanese, Hebrew, something like that, you can turn right to left editing support on here and that will help you be able to do that. Um, if you are in a particularly active email thread, you can add more conversations to the page. There is a five second period where you can undo your send. Once you send email past that point, that email is sent. There is no way to retrieve it. Um, you can turn your grammar suggestions on and off, spell suggestions on and off, autocorrects on and off. Um, Smart Compose. So, uh, Google has something that predicts text. So if you're uh, writing an email and it's like, um, hey, have you completed this grant? And then it probably will so, um, go ahead and uh, suggest application because it's sort of using machine learning to know that grant and application in a workplace setting typically go together. So you, if you find that creepy, you can turn that off here. Um, there's a, several other things that I'm not really going to go over here. I will mention the vacation responder. So you can, if this is a work account for you and you're on vacation, you can go ahead and set a um, vacation responder. Um, that's always useful. So let's look at labels. So there are a bunch of different labels that are sort of defaulted inbox you can't get rid of. Um, star, these you can't get rid of, but you can hide. There's also categories here and you can create new labels. So, um, especially if this is a personal account, one of the very first things I would create is create a new label called receipts. And then hit create. I've now got a label here. Uh, now, when I get all of the emails from Apple and Amazon and all of my online purchasing with receipts, um, I can just file them in the receipt category and um, they're there if I need them for tax purposes or something like that, but they're not cluttering up my inbox and they're still easy to find. Um, 
I can also, let's create another label. Um, well, we're just going to call it kiddo soccer. Kiddo soccer. Can't spell. All right. So we've got another one here, kiddo soccer. I switched to my inbox. You'll see here it listed here, kiddo soccer and receipts were here. We are going to mark this one as part of kiddo soccer. So in the inbox, I can click on labels and I can select kiddo soccer. It can actually be part of multiple labels. So if this was a receipt for paying for uh, pictures, I could mark it kiddo soccer, but I could also mark it receipts. Um, but we're just going to do kiddo soccer. Um, it's also part of inbox because it's in the inbox. If I wanted to archive it, get it out of the inbox, I could click that and remove it from the inbox. But we don't want to do that right now. So now I know that this was part of kiddo soccer. It shows me here that it is. I can also click on kiddo soccer and I can see that it's and that will tell me it's part of inbox because it's in the inbox. So let's see if we can do the thing where we make it show up, where we make it have a, a separate category. So let's come here. And do customize. And empty. More options. Yep, we can do kiddo soccer. Um, and can I move it around? Well, I could do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna click, oh, I'm not save changes. This one, you do have to go down to the bottom and click save changes. And now when we go to the inbox, we've got one all kiddo soccer. So it looks like you definitely can um, sort of have it in the inbox with labels that say kiddo soccer. Um, get that to, is that not moving? Do I just click uh, to get multiple labels on one email? Do I just click the label icon as a, sec a second time to add the second label? And the answer is yes. Uh, you just, uh, you can add as many labels as you wanted. So um, in this particular email, if we went and we clicked the label icon and we also clicked receipts, that would do that. So now uh, when we look at it, well, why is this not? There we go. We have to click apply down here at the bottom. So now receipts is applied. Now, when I click the inbox, it's both kiddo and receipts. Okay. Um, sometimes, there we go. All right, see a hand raised? What is our question? All right, while you're typing, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about a couple of other things that we can do. Oh, there we go. Uh, what, what's our question with the, the raised hand? Is this what receptionists do? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what the context for that is. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the context for that is. I'm assuming that you get folks that um, are, are sorting out email. Um, but yeah, I'm not, not terribly sure on that. Oh, and work related. I think it just depends on the person and the administrative assistant um, as to how inboxes are sorted. Um, <clears throat> I, I've, I've never been an administrative assistant, so quite frankly, I'm not sure. 
And we had a couple more questions raised. Do you, um, you folks have questions? You can type them in chat or in um, um, the Q and A feature. Um, and while you're doing that, there we're getting a little close on time here. So I do want to show you one more feature of Gmail. Um, and that is uh, uh, sorting your mail automatically. So one of the things that you can do is you can click on a message um, <clears throat> and you can click on the three dots here and you can tell it filter, like, filter messages like these automatically. So if I want to um, always filter certain things and let me think about the things I always filter is like my uh, receipt from Apple. So my iTunes receipts, I don't even see them in my inbox. They always get filtered into my receipt email. Into my receipt um, uh, label. Um, and the way I do that is a really long time ago, I found the first receipt and it was from, and it was the Apple email address. So from, or you could even do two or has the subject. I actually have a filter and the subject is receipt um, or has the words or doesn't have the words. Uh, that's sort of up to you, uh, but you hit search. And that will come up there, or we can actually create a filter that does this automatically. Um, so I'm gonna do filter messages like these again. I'm gonna say from my second account, and I'm gonna click create a filter. And it's gonna, when it matches this email address, I'm going to tell it to skip the inbox. Actually, no, I'm gonna tell it to star it and then I'm going to tell it to apply the label kiddo soccer. And I'm also going to tell it to also apply to one matching conversation. And I'm going to click create filter. So now <clears throat> when I click on this, this email, we already had that uh, set for kiddo soccer, but it's also starred. If I switch to Safari, um, and I'm gonna send another email. Send an email and hit send. Send another email. I sent two emails. If I come over here to our test, other test account, you'll notice that the email I sent is already marked kiddo soccer because I told Google to make sure that everything that is um, coming from this email address is marked kiddo soccer. So if you've got emails that are coming from folks on a regular basis, and they're with a specific thing, you want them labeled something specifically, then you can go and filter them and actually set the labels then. Um, so that's a nice way of keeping yourself organized. Um, I, a lot of times with the receipt one, I actually tell it to never even hit my inbox to just archive it automatically, but set it to receipt. And that way, when I need it for something else, I have it. It's just sitting in my archive. All right, my friends, we are down to the last few minutes. I'm going to switch back to our presentation. I'm going to stop sharing here. And I'm going to switch back to my presentation. And let's recap and do some resources.
So present. Screen share. There we go. And let's present. So in addition to Gmail and Calendar, um, of course, Google has a ton of other apps. Um, so forms to create surveys are really great. I use forms a lot. Uh, the brilliant thing about the forms is, is not only can you ask survey sort of questions, but you can attach uh, files to them. So if you had a, um, everybody submit a picture for Frank's uh, retirement party, submit your favorite picture of Frank, then you could send out a survey and have everybody just submit their favorite picture of Frank. You collect them all in a folder in Google Drive, and then you can make a slide presentation out of it. Um, of course, Google Meet, I'm sure uh, in the pandemic, we've all used some form of uh, video conferencing. Google Meet is an another of them. There's sites, so you can actually create websites with Google Sites. Um, and then there are various uh, apps and um, things that you can do to learn how to use them. So there's Primer. There's also Quick Help for your small businesses. And if you are interested in continuing with go, Grow with Google, if you go to g.co slash grow on air, you'll be able to find other workshops. All right. Does anybody have any questions before we go today? It's like we might have one. Um, uh, yeah, actually, if you send it to programs, and I'm going to type this out for everybody, um, if you send it to programs at dospace.org, um, I can probably send you resources uh, to get to your questions. Uh, the nice thing about Google um, Google products is, is they're pretty heavily documented. They're pretty pretty well used, and Google's um, help section is pretty useful. So just hitting Google, the search engine, uh, and typing in your question is a great way to figure out uh, what's going on. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. So we are um, finished for today. I wanna thank you all for coming. Um, and and we hope to see, oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, is Google Slides the same as PowerPoint? Yes. Um, I don't think it quite has as many features as PowerPoint, but the advantage of it is, is that Google Slide is free with your Gmail account and you have to pay for PowerPoint. So uh, I know a lot of people use Google Slides because then they don't have to pay for PowerPoint. So um, yes, it is, it is almost exactly like PowerPoint, especially in the basic stuff. Any other questions? All right. Well, uh, thank you all for coming and I hope that you guys all have a really good day. See you later.